and welcome to the Simplifiers Podcast. Look at you shine. You found the secret to a better life. When we simplify, we thrive in every single way. And on Fridays, we release a short bonus episode highlighting a super thought of the day. These mini episodes will help you spark new ideas, new ways of thinking, or simply challenge the mold beliefs that you might have. And today, I want to talk about a really tricky subject for most of us, especially if you lead teams or own your own business. Let's talk about how to fire someone. Okay, so wait, before you press pause, say nope and move on to another episode. Hear me out, friends. This isn't all doom and gloom. I dare say these skills might help you in other aspects of leadership, communication, and catching the warning signs when things projects, or people are about to go awry. You know, earlier this week, we chatted with business coach Kelly Roach, and she shared everything that she knows about building an unstoppable dream team. And you know, this got me thinking, before you make your first hire, you get really, really good at storing everything up in your brilliant brain. I mean, really, the buck stops with you. You're a one-man band who not only handles sales and invoicing, pitching, social media marketing, and, oh yeah, designing, creating, and delivering your products and services to your beloved clients. I mean, it's all you all the time. And then something happens. You become wildly successful, and you've got to scale and fast in order to keep up with the sheer amount of work on your plate right now. So some would say that's a good problem to have, but if you've got zero experience managing people, this can be a tricky transition to navigate. And let's face it, your first one or two hires or fires might be where you cut your teeth on things, make a few mistakes, and gain some massive lessons learned. So here we are. The wheels have come off the bus. Your team member is either consistently showing up to work late or missing deadlines or distracted at meetings or something just feels a bit off. Here are five simple steps on how to fire someone when the time calls for it. Step one, assess the situation. Before taking drastic action, you've got to get clear on what's actually going on. Why are they so unhappy? Is it something you're causing or are there outside forces at play here? The very best way to assess the situation is to call a face-to-face meeting as soon as you notice things are slipping. I mean, don't delay. Don't pretend that it'll go away and don't be afraid of confrontation. All of this will only make things way, way worse later down the line. So in this face-to-face meeting, which by the way, I think it's most ideal if you can get out of the office and take a walk around the block together, it'll put them more at ease most times. I want you to ask this simple question. Hey, so-and-so, I just wanted to check in with you and see how things are going. I noticed some things have changed. What's going on in your world right now? And that leads us into step two. Put your listening ears on. This is not the time for you to do the talking. If they're frustrated with their workload or having a conflict with another team member or something else is bothering them, you want them to share it and in their own words. So ask the question and then listen intently. Notice their body language or how it changes their walking pace. Are they forthcoming with the details or are they totally closed off? After they respond, take a breath and then reply with something like this. Hey, thanks for sharing that. So if I heard you right, it's this that's affecting you right now. Is that correct? This is to help them get confirmation that you heard things correctly and truly understand them in this moment. Which takes us to step number three, take corrective action. Next, I want you to say something like this. Okay, so how do you think we should solve this problem? Let your team member come up with their own solution, whether that's giving them more one-on-one training time with you or reducing their workload, reassigning them off a problem client, or you never know, they may actually say, hey, you know what? I'm ready to quit. And well, there you have it. Tick, check, let's move on swiftly. If they can't come up with a solution right there on the spot, Ask them to respond within the next 24 hours. And if there still isn't a solution from their side, you'll need to provide one yourself. 
Either way, the corrective action that you guys take must be trackable, realistic, and mutually agreed upon with a specific follow-up date set. And remember, document your meetings always. Step four is this, follow-up, fire, or refine. Okay, so it's time to follow up with your teammate. Did they do the thing? What about you as their boss? Did you do what you said you would? And have things improved or gotten worse? This is the come to Jesus moment where swift action must be taken if things are continuing to go downhill and fast. Look, your mentoring efforts, training and guidance just aren't working and your team member is still missing the mark and it's time to let them go. Which leads to step five, set next steps accordingly. Okay, guys, I'm not going to lie. Firing someone is not easy. Take the emotion out of the situation and take action swiftly. Make sure you've got all client files backed up and access to all logins and passwords before you do anything else. The last thing you want is someone wiping your documents in a passive aggressive rage. I mean, not that your person is going to do that, but hey, you never know. And once you've got things backed up, I want you to review their employment or freelancer contract. What are the stipulations in place for termination? Make sure you're doing all the things by the books. And then if there's a promise of notice time or payout of unused vacation days or other details, make sure you've got it all outlined in their termination letter and written transition plan. And here's the most important detail. I want you to be direct and succinct. Don't dilly-dally. I suggest saying something like this. Michael, the reason I've called you in here is because we've decided to let you go, and today will be your last day. Here's why. You guys, getting fired is no fun for anyone, but there is a way to do this with professionalism and a certain level of kindness. I mean, you could offer a letter of recommendation or introductions to others in your industry to help them along the way in their future job search, as you see fit, of course. Your offer of sincere support moving forward might not be appreciated in the moment, but it will be felt in the coming weeks ahead once they get past this crappy day for them. And just one final whisper, just from me to you, dear friend, come in closer. As per Grote Consulting Corporation, the four emotions people go through after being fired are shock, denial, anger, or grief. Click the link in our show notes to get more information about this, but I want you to listen to what they say to you after they receive the news. Your response will be more effective if you know what the driving emotion is underneath. Bottom line, acknowledge the emotion, don't debate or defend the decision, and focus on the future. Confrontation is hard, but necessary. If you allow a situation to go from bad to worse, It'll affect others on your team and the quality of the work you deliver to your clients. And let's face it, it's going to take a toll on your mental health over time. That's why the five-step process to firing someone is mostly focused on how you can course correct the situation rather than having the knee-jerk reaction to get rid of them first. If you can salvage the situation, go for it. But if you can't, don't delay. Take swift action. Do this final meeting at the end of the workday. Do it with dignity and thank them for their contributions to the company. Shake hands and move on with your lives. You are brave. You can do this. I believe in you. It's time to simplify. If this thought of the day inspired you, snap a photo of you doing the thing and send it to me via Instagram, privately or publicly. Just tag the simplifiers and I'll be your virtual accountability buddy in your quest to simplify your life. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get more of this awesome goodness coming to you automatically on Tuesdays and Fridays. And if you know someone who could really use this advice, would you mind sharing it with them? Simply copy and paste the URL and kick it over to them in a text or an email and we'll do the rest. And a big thanks to our undercover superheroes at the Simplifiers podcast that help us create these episodes for you each and every week. 
Susan Marie, our podcast editor, Jeffrey Lynn, our video editor, Janine Yardley, our show notes editor, Leiden Yardley, our director of brilliance, Manminder Athwal, our blogger. Our advisory board includes Aubrey Nowitzki, Chris Justice, and George Mills. And I'm your host, Mary Baird Wilcock. Thank you so much for listening and telling your peeps about us. And as always, friends, keep things simple. Thank you.